Today we're going to be talking about how to calculate Punnett squares. So let's say you have a mama who has a big B and a little b. And let's say dad has big B, little b as well. What you have to do is create the Punnett square first. So first create the square and put four little squares inside of the big square. And you're going to take the mom, the big B, the little b, and you're going to put it down along the side. And you're going to take dad with the other color, big B, little b. And we are going to fill in the boxes. The blue ones go down because they're on top, so they're going to go downwards. The ones on the other side, the big B, are going to go across, so the big B and the big B. And then on the bottom, the little B is also going to go across. As you can see, it doesn't matter whether you put the blue one or the red one, I mean the blue one or the black one first, it really doesn't matter. And in this case, we have three squares that have a dominant gene in it. So whenever there is a dominant gene, the dominant gene always wins, no matter what, even if there is a recessive in there. So three out of four squares have a dominant gene, and only one square has two recessive genes. Remember that recessive can only win if the dominant are not present. So now we have to calculate and figure out how much is three out of four and how much is one out of four. So the dominant, again, is three out of four, and the recessive, if we look back at the last screen, was one out of four, so we're gonna call it one out of four. To figure out and divide, you have to take the number on top of the fraction and put it on the inside of the division thing. It's like it falls like a tree in the forest and it goes on the inside because it falls down. Now, four cannot go into three. It goes in zero times, so that's not possible. So what we have to do is put in a decimal and then put in a zero. And if we put a decimal on inside of the square, we also have to put a zero on the outside and a decimal on the outside. Now we have a number, the number 30, because three and zero make 30, even though there's a decimal in between them. And how many times does four go into 30? Well, it goes in seven times, and four times seven is 28. And we know that if we subtract 30 from 28, we get two. Now there's no more zeros up here, so we have to put in another zero and bring it down. In this case, we have two zero, which makes 20, and four goes into 25 times, and four times five is 20, and we end up with zero. So we know that the answer is 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Now, when you have a 0 0.75, that's the same thing as 75%, because after you look at the number directly after the point, and it's a 75, so it's 75%. Now, for the recessive, again, you the tree it's like a tree falling. The one falls inside to the divisor, so you have a four on the outside of the division box and a one on the inside of the division box. And once again, we have the same problem that four cannot go into one evenly, so we have to put a zero there and add in a decimal. So a point and a zero, add a zero, in front of the decimal because four does not go into one. And four goes into 10 two times, so we can do 10 minus eight, which again is two. Bring down a zero. Make sure to add the zero in there though. And four times five is 20, so we know that it's gonna be 0.25 as our answer. 0.25 as a decimal is 25%. One out of four is 25%. So if you wanna just memorize all of these things, remember that one quarter is 25 cents. And so just remember it as one quarter equals 25 cents. Whereas what if you had two quarters? Well, two out of four is 50% because two quarters equals 50% and so on. You could do it with three quarters and four quarters. It doesn't really matter because three quarters is 75% and four quarters is a dollar, which would just be 100%. And that is how you work with solving Punnett squares.